Science Fiction Book Hall from the old bookshop at Morristown, New Jersey. Hi, I'm Gary Lovisi, and we just went book shopping today, and I found a few things. As you can see by the spine here, take a look at some of them. And uh, some nice stuff, really nice condition books, reasonable prices. Can't ask for better than that. And I'd just like to share some of what I got today with you. And uh, we're going to start off with um, Seed of Stars by Dan Morgan and John Kippax. This is from 1972. Uh, the cover art is by Vincent de Fate. And it is a, uh, the second book in this series by Morgan and Kippax. I read these years ago, and it's a really great, great series of, of uh, space opera science fiction novels that anybody that hasn't read Dan Morgan or this series uh, of three books, this trilogy, uh, is missing out on something really good. Um, just the back cover. It shows some other books in the Valentine series. The next two are the second and third book in Roy Meyer's Dolphin series. Um, these are from 1968 and 69, The Daughters of Dolphins, and Destiny and the Dolphins, 1968 and 1969. This is the second book in the series, third trilogy. This is the third book. These Valentines are beautiful. They're gorgeous. I don't know who did the cover art on these two. Uh, this book is from 1968. If you take a look at it, it looks like it was from, you know, except for a little bit of age on the pages. Uh, it looks like a brand new book. And uh, this one's also very nice. These were very moderately priced. And they're, uh, it's good reading, good reading. Uh, the next book is, uh, it's Adele from 1975. Um, it's Reitif, Emissary to the Stars by Keith Lomer. Great, sexy, good girl art cover. I'm not sure who did the cover art on that one. The next two are uh, Sword and Sorcery by... Um, by Gardner, Gardner F. Fox, and these are in the Conan tradition from uh, 19, 1970 and 1971, um, Kothar and the Conjurer's Curse, and Kothar and the Wizard Slayer, both by Gardner F. Fox. In the Conan tradition, Jeff Jones cover art, um, the, uni, the uni book reprints the earlier Belmont book. What they did was uh, this book uh, had a, it was published by Belmont originally in 70 or 71, and it had like uh, same thing, the Belmont logo, price, Belmont, and the number, except that had it over here. And when Unibook reprinted them, they just put this covering over it. So um, it's a great, it's a great series. Uh, the Jeff Jones covers alone are worth the price of admission, but um, these are in the Conan style and tradition, and they're very good, very good reads. Um, next one is Don't Cry For Me, uh, Dell number 672 by William Campbell Galt. It's a crime novel with a great James Meese cover art. Dell 672, and there's a picture of Bill Galt on the back cover. He was a great guy. I published uh, one of his last books, um, Man Alone, and uh, published some uh, of his short stories in Hard Boiled. He was a great guy, great, great writer. He wrote his Joe Puma books and Joe Callahan books are incredible, and anything by uh, Bill Galt is great. Next one is interesting, Variant. Um, it's uh, International Polygonics, Murder from the East, 
This is a Race Williams story by Carol John Daly. Uh, International Polygonics uh, began in 1978. This was one of their first books that they published. And um, Race Williams is a ultra, ultra tough, hard-boiled detective uh, in the Spillane mold. Spillane actually modeled Mike Hammer on Race Williams. And Race Williams and uh, 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 Two-Gun Terry Mack were probably uh, the uh, forerunners of the modern hard-boiled uh, private eye that uh, appeared in Black Mask even before Raymond Chandler and Dashiell Hammett um, had their stories published. So Cal John Daly is a, a really tough guy writer. This is a variant. The, uh, the IPL, okay, International Polygonics, that was their name, is a mouthful. Uh, that's the back cover. Um, the book was um, actually released as, as a regular sized paperback and it was cut short. So you can see the pages, there's extra room on the bottom where the normal size of a paperback would be here. And um, so most of the ones that you see are the, uh, are, are the uh, normal size paperback. And then this one is the taller version, which is a variant much more scarce. Uh, now we're going to get back to science fiction. I picked up a bunch of uh, really beautiful condition uh, 1950s uh, science fiction digest magazines. And um, this is uh, Orbit number three from, uh, from, sometimes they don't have the dates on them. Um, I can find the date. There is no date actually of orbit number three, as far as I can see. Um, beautiful, beautiful cover art. Doesn't say who's going, who 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 did the cover art. There's stories by um, many great writers in here: Alan E. Norris, Gordon Dickinson, Mac Reynolds, Charles Beaumont, August Derleth. Uh, Page 26 is the, is the Alan E. Norse story, my friend, Bo my friend Bobby, and uh, the Charles Beaumont story is uh, Hair of the Dog, Charles Beaumont, very good. Uh, suspense, of the dog, science I fiction, I think that was a Nazareth fantasy album. writer. He wrote. He wrote a lot of. Uh, he wrote stories for the Twilight Zone, and many other mag, uh, many other uh, TV shows. Fantastic Universe science fiction. Uh, this is number six, May 1954. I'll show you the cover of that. And the back cover has an ad for, for the Austin uh, Car of England. It's an interesting, kind of Austin or Austin Martin, I guess. Uh, in this, uh, we have uh, stories by Philip Jose Farmer, Sam Merwin, Jack Williamson, Frank Balknap Long, Philip K. Dick, Richard Matheson, Marion Zimmer Bradley, Robert Block, Evan Hunter. I mean, it's a who's who of, of science fiction. Uh, No illustrations, though, unfortunately. Uh, Hitchhiker's Package by Jack Williamson. The Philip K. Dick story 80, on page 84. Again, Survey Team by Philip K. Dick. I think that's a well-known story of his. No illustration, unfortunately. Um, the cover design, it says it's by Clarence Door, so it's a Clarence Door cover. Science Stories, December 1953. This is, uh, this is issue number two, 
and uh, Ray Palmer was the editor. Cover art is by Virgil Finley. Uh, it contains stories by Mac Reynolds, Edward Welland, John Bloodstone. Great Virgil Finley cover. Beautiful issue. Number two from December 1953. Coming next issue. And inside is a write up on Edward Wellen, contents page, and editorial, and then the uh, John Bloodstone novella starts off potential zero. And it's illustrated by Virgil Finley, as is the cover art. Um, it's always nice to find some British uh, mushroom publisher books. Um, this one uh, found The Devouring Fire by Vargo Statton. This is from 1951. It's British. And uh, it's from, um, Vargo Statton was, of course, John Russell Fern. It's a beautiful copy. The artist is Ron Turner. It's signed with his initials, RT. Ron Turner did a lot of uh, covers for these uh, British science fiction mushroom publisher digests in the 50s. He did a lot of comic book work, and he also uh, later in the 90s did uh, covers for books in my series of uh, Gryphon books, uh, science fiction rediscovery series, uh, which included the Golden Amazon books, all 27 as well as the Gryphon Crime and uh, Mystery Series and other Gryphon books that I published. So Ron Turner was a, was a class act. He was a great artist, very versatile. And uh, this is one of his uh, early 1951 covers. Um, Fight, for a lot, uh, Fight, Fight for Life by Murray Leinster is a Prize Novels Digest. It's number 10 in the series. And it's a science fiction from 1947. It's a novel of the atomic age. Um, and uh, Murray Leinster was uh, Will F. Jenkins Jr. Um, and this is a beautiful copy, as you can see, in the blue back. Rocket Stories, September 1953. Is, this is number three. Uh, it has stories by uh, Noel Loomis and um, James E. Gunn, Stanley Mullen, Irving E. Cox, and uh, cover art is by Civiletti, really nice kind of science fiction cover art in the uh, contents page. And the lead story, Apprentice to the Lamp by Irving E. Cox. And the artwork is by Ebel, E-B-E-L. Uh, which actually looks a little bit like uh, very much in the uh, uh, Virgil Finley style, somewhat. And the cover art is just great. Um, that was Rocket Stories. This is Science Fiction Adventures. This is May 1953. And it's uh, number four in the series. Contains stories by Theodore Cogswell, Robert Sheckley, Robert D. Sampson, and Eric Van Lynn, Police Your Planet. Van Lynn was uh, was uh, Lester Del Rey, and the cover art is by H.R. Uh, Van Dongen, who did many later uh, covers for Ballantine and Del Rey books. This is the cover for Science Fiction Adventures number four, May 1953, and that's the lead-off story, Theodore Cogswell. The Other Cheek, again, uh, illustrated by Ebel, E-B-E-L. 
it's credited and signed. So he made sure that he uh, got credit. The other stories, some of the other art in this issue. The Robert Sheckley story, What Goes Up. Robert Sheckley was a terrific, terrific writer. Some more of the illustrations. Orban did up, this is Police Your Planet, the lead novel by Eric Van Lynn, which was Lester Del Rey. Again, a beautiful copy. Look at the spines on these books. You know, when you see books from 1953, the spines like that, with covers like this, you know, back covers, page edges. A little age to them, you can tell, but, uh, you know, they're 53, so they're almost 70 years old now. Um, older than I am. There's a lot of that going around. Yeah, older than I am. Uh, science fiction um, crime uh, combines in the Galaxy Science Fiction novel number 22. That's Killer to Come by Sam Merwin. Sam Merwin was a uh, pulp writer. He was a science fiction uh, magazine editor. He wrote for gold medal books, crime novels, as well as science fiction novels for other publishers, for, for Ace Books and everybody else. Um, this is a really nice copy again of uh, his science fiction crime novel. And it's... Uh, Pimp's cover? It's... Uh, Set in 1954, Galaxy Science Fiction novel number 22, 35 cents a copy, subscription, six novels for $2. So in those days, you could get six of these beautiful books for $2. And uh, the cover is by Amption, signed down here. Um, now we have uh, a few others. Fate magazine. Um, really don't collect these, but some of these have really nice cover art. This is number 61 from April 1955. Um, Fate had a lot of uh, basically strange stories, uh, supposedly factual accounts of uh, strange experiences, of the unknown world, the mystical world, and all of that. Uh, have you lived before the house where the furniture danced, Zimbabwe, Africa's Lost Civilization, uh, if anybody knows anything about Zimbabwe today, it's more lost than ever. Um, but we'll not get into that. This is the April 1955 issue. Great, sexy, good girl cover art. I don't know who the artist is who did this, but it's a, it's a beauty. Um, amazing Stories, February 67. Uh, Ron Goulart. Uh, one of his uh, latest stories in John Brunner, uh, covered by Arnold Kahn. And you can see this various uh, John Brunner, Wallace West, um, various. And here's the uh, story by Ron Goulart. That's the opening story in that issue. Uh, Amazing Stories, March 1969, contains uh, John Sladek, Thomas Dish, David Bunch, Richard Meredith's uh, novel, Mac Reynolds, Milton Lesser, Walter M. Miller. It's a, it's a, it's a really great lineup. Um, it does not say who did the cover art. Um, the uh, Thomas Dish story, illustrated by Bruce Jones. The Invasion of the Giant Stupid Dinosaurs. Tom Dish was a satirist and a humorist and a terrific science fiction writer. 
Um, I always enjoyed his 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 uh, stories and books, and uh, one of his novels, uh, Camp Concentration, is uh, is a masterpiece. Um, David R. Bunch story. Trying to find the. Richard C. Meredith, We All Died at Breakaway Station. Um, this was a really good book I read uh, years ago when it came out uh, in, in, in paperback after this uh, magazine uh, serialization. Richard C. Meredith was a great science fiction writer who died too, too young. Uh, another, another great loss. And um, Amazing uh, Stories, May 1969, is uh, Edmund, Hamil Edmund Hamilton's The Star Kings, uh, Ray Russell novel, Murray, uh, uh, Ray Russell short story, sorry, uh, Murray Leinster, Milton Lesser, Ted White does the editorial duties. Um, the cover artist is not shown. And um, this is the cover from Amazing May 1969. And this is the Edmund Hamilton um, story, which is uh, illustrated by Dan Adkins, who's a rather famous uh, comic book and comic strip artist. And um, Edmund Hamilton always writes a great story. The Murray Leinster story, The Invaders. A nice uh, two-page spread there for that. Black Sunrise, Milton Lesser. Lawrence M. Jennifer was always appearing in these magazines. Always did decent work, sometimes even excellent work. He wrote a lot of stuff. And uh, we're going to close it out with uh, an interesting item. Issue number 22, May 1957, issue of Other Worlds. This is a pulp size issue larger and uh, larger than the digest and thinner in size. Beautiful copy. You can see the spine. The cover art is by the editor, Ray Palmer. Uh, it's interesting that he did the editorial work on this and the cover art. Um, let me just see. If I can... There's a long editorial in here. The, the Lamps, New, New Lamps by Robert Moore Williams is the lead-off story. It has a photo with a, with a shadow image, kind of a low-budget uh, way to do an illustration for, for a story. Um, but uh, these were low-budget low magazines. Palmer really didn't have much of a budget to, uh, to do this, to do stories. Um, the Falcons of Nara Bell Bedla by Marion Zimmer Bradley. This is an early Marion Zimmer Bradley uh, short novel from 1957. It would uh, later be uh, reprinted in book form by Ace Books as half of an Ace Double. And The Serpent River by Don Wilcox. Don Wilcox wrote uh, The Return of the Whispering Gorilla and uh, a lot of other great science fiction and horror uh, stories for uh, Amazing and Fantastic in the 40s and 50s. And uh, I actually published one of his books in the Gryphon Rediscovery series. He's a great guy, very talented science fiction author. And uh, there you have it.
It's uh, not an incredible book haul, but some nice things uh, from the uh, from the old bookshop in Morristown, New Jersey. Uh, it's always fun to go there and look around. You never know what you're going to find. Uh, it's hit or miss, just like any other bookstore, when uh, you happen to be in the right place at the right time, and if they have uh, some uh, some things out that you uh, that you like or that you're interested in, uh, and usually. Uh, there the price is right and the condition is really uh, pretty good so it's a uh, it's a nice place to go to um, and uh, this is just a kind of a mismatch of uh, different things some of these books I'm going to keep I'm going to upgrade my own and some I'll sell and, and uh, some I'm going to give to friends or whatever but uh, it's just a uh, it's just a nice group of books uh, nothing again nothing earth-shattering nothing uh, rare or uh, worth uh, you know, a ton of money or anything like that, but just really, really nice condition and uh, reasonably priced books uh, that are old. And uh, you can't ask for better than that. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed this look at this uh, this little uh, book haul. And um, if you did, give us a thumbs up and a like. And um, I want to thank you all for subscribing. And I hope that you'll uh, let your friends and reader friends and uh, contacts know about this uh, this channel and uh, get everybody else to subscribe too and uh, the more the merrier. <laughs> okay well thanks a lot and I hope you enjoyed this uh, this is ish, this uh, episode of uh, this uh, crazy channel. Thanks for looking. See you next time.